Hello, uh, Kelly here from Rupert Sue. Today we are working on creating a book cover using chipboard for our, um, basically this is an envelope journal. So it's taking envelopes, just your standard grading card envelopes, or th these are really the large envelopes, and uh, gluing them together. So essentially these, there's like, I don't know, 20 or so envelopes all uh, glued together. And then you just wrap the final flap around the, the edge of the spine as I've done here. And then, so that is the, there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to create these usually they're the the triangle greeting card envelopes but these just happen to be the the rectangle flap so i created this book um and i need to create a cover for this journal that i have now when you're doing these envelopes there can be there's no real standard size for these envelopes that I've seen. I have lots of different shapes and sizes. So the important part of this tutorial is to show you how to create a, a cover based on the dimensions of whatever your envelope is. So I'm basically going to give you uh, dimensions for the difference. Um, so, all right, let's, let's just start here. So I am using chipboard. Now, I know that there are fancy book, uh, book chipboards out there. This is a junk journal. So I am using supplies that are readily available. That is uh, my style and I'm generally not buying new products. So this chipboard comes from a da -da -da, cereal box. So this is two different cereal boxes. Uh, I, I had used one and my, my second piece was not the right size. And I will say when you're creating this, you, these really have to be straight. <laughs> so you can't just wing it with these, with the spine uh, angles and, and this, this cover to, to fit the, the envelope journal. So when, uh, when you're measuring, there's a couple different ways you can use your, if you have a paper cutter of some kind, those are really handy. This is what I use. This is my, my, I think this is called your, oh, it's called your story. Not my story. It's your story. So <laughs> paper cutter. Uh, this one's really nice. Fiskars has them. They're but let's just say you don't have one of those cutters. You can still use, uh, this is a, you know, dollar tree or, you know, I think they're three for a dollar cutting and a ruler and you should be all set to go. A T ruler uh, or square is, is really handy to have with that, but, uh, uh, just a ruler will also do so that you get your angle straight so how do we how do we figure out how big this should be that's the first key so our spine um, as you can see you can pretty much make it uh, a little bit bigger than your spine so I've basically done I generally do it's like two millimeters is basically all it is on each side, maybe one and a half millimeters on each side. So <clears throat> a, a, basically just a little bit wider than, than your, your spine on your, your book guts. This is my book guts. That's what I'm calling my book guts. <laughs> so yeah, there's just uh, one or two millimeters wider than your spine. And then this part, this will eventually be the back cover. 
is, and we, I have these dimensions out here too, if you need them. So we want basically one eighth of an inch all around your, your, your guts. So you basically measure your guts and what they are, and then you give yourself an eighth of an inch extra. I think this is probably a little bit less than an eighth of an inch extra, but that's what I'm going with. So, uh, but it, an eighth of an inch extra will be what you precisely need. So that's what you should definitely do. <laughs> okay, so, and that is all edges. So you're also giving yourself on the spine an eighth of an inch extra, but also it will be the exact same height as the front and the back cover. So all of these will be the front, will be the same. So now, now that we've got that all figured out, we will need a quarter of an inch in between the front cover, the spine, and the back cover. So this space in between here should be one quarter inch. So let me get out my ruler, which is missing, but I do have this handy dandy <laughs> three hole punch, which I seem to be using now. Okay, so quarter inch in between will be about that wide. And then I touched it. <laughs> so, and I know it says, uh, it's hard to keep it from moving. Okay, that one's gonna stay still. Jeez, <laughs> okay, maybe not. All right, this one's gonna stay still. I'm not going to bump it. I swear. I am not going to bump it. Okay. There we go. I personally feel much more comfortable doing it with my eye than anything else. But that's just me. That edges. Got a little bump to it. Seems like a really bad place to have a bump on your spine. Okay, so once you've measured that out and you want it to stay nice and still and right where you want it while you're, you're gluing and everything. So we're gonna use, and I just get this as a tip from another YouTuber, which is to use the masking tape to keep it in place. All right, looks good. But it isn't good. <laughs> you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm going to take a piece of this. And I'm going to, this masking tape isn't very sticky. And I'm gonna stick it, this is just very temporary, to my table so it doesn't move. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put this here. I don't know, that spine looks just a little shorter. I know I cut a little bit off, but it was only one part. It shouldn't be that much shorter. Okay, make sure they're all the same. <laughs> All right. This one just seems a little bit bigger. But I know this one's right. And that one's right. So this, I'm actually going to trim a little bit off because we really don't want that to be that much different. So I'm going to trim that much off the end. Not too much. It wasn't that big of a difference, but we're gonna, it's, it's enough that we should be concerned about it for this project. So that's a lot better. 
That's a lot better. Now, get this positioned. Okay. And then we're going to take another piece. That really helped, just kind of sticking that one piece down. Just to have our, our center. Okay, so now, now that we have our spine situated the way we want it, the way we need it, we're gonna talk about fabric materials. So you can cover your book with paper, but I don't really recommend that. Fabric is gonna be the best option for your for the book because you're going to need that flexibility that paper just isn't going to have so fabric is your choice but what fabric that's 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 the next question so i i kind of watched the videos on um nick the booksmith on this and and i was just kind of i don't know there were, she just was using all of this really fancy, expensive materials to make these books. And for a lot of us, especially doing these junk journals where we're mostly using recycled materials, that just really isn't an option. So I'm going to give you some recommendations for fabric. I have two pieces of fabric that I'm using as a sample here today. And I get all of my fabric generally either on the clearance or on, um, at, you know, used, uh, you know, rummage sales, that sort of thing. But also at Joann Fabrics, that's another option. I, generally speaking, you're going to want to go for the fabrics in the home decor section. Those are the upholstery fabrics, and they're, they're thick enough that you can't see through them. And they're, they're, so they're sturdy. A lot of the fabrics that are over in the apparel section or in the quilting are going to be too thin and you're going to be able to see through them, especially when you're applying your glue. So pretty much anything in the upholstery section or the home decor, which you can also find those options on the clearance rack, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do really well. I scored this piece at Joann Fabrics for a heck of a deal. Um, and it was actually Ralph Lauren. They get these clearance upholstery fabrics from another, from, from furniture makers. So sometimes you can get really good deals, you know, seven to $9 a yard. And uh, so that's, that's really reasonable. But you can also go and see at the thrift store, any kind of fabrics for, draperies often work so if you kind of have this is a really wonderful uh, polyester fabric and you can see it's really thick it's very sturdy but it's still got the flex that you need for the book so this is a really good option so I hope that helps with trying to find fabrics for your book cover. I went ahead and I I uh, cut a piece of fabric that I'm going to use. And I can go ahead and take this temporary tape off. Oh, I took that in the garbage. And since this fabric is not see-through, I don't have to worry about the font from the cereal boxes coming through. You're going to want to give yourself about an inch of uh, leeway around the book cover. Oh, here's another tip. If you're making a junk journal, these are the uh, cereal box ends. These make really good tabs for your junk journals. So I always keep those and create little tabs and either cover them with paper or just ink them up. So that's the another little tip I have for you. Okay, so now we've got our book cover and we're going to want to glue. Glue, glue, glue. You're going to want to glue this side, or which, you know, 
you don't want to glue the fabric is what I'm saying. You want to glue your, uh, your chipboard. That's what we're calling that today. It's cardboard. It's cereal box cardboard. Uh, yeah. So here we go. Yes, I am. I'm using Ralph Lauren fabric with cereal box. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Okay. So I am using, this is an important piece of information. I am using Fabrifix. It is a fabric adhesive glue. It glues really well to paper. And I believe it's called, I believe this is a silicone glue. I believe. So other silicone glues will work as well. Fabri-Tech, Aileen's fabric, those are all good. They will work fantastically. This glue, you don't want to get it too close to the edge. I don't know if you notice people doing that. Otherwise, it will ooze out. It kind of comes in a little bit of a, of a bead line and and then it flattens out so it really helps if you don't go all the way to the edge you want it pretty close to the edge but not all the way otherwise you might you might have problems and then we'll just glue that spine want to you know i mean this glue you don't need much but you want to be a little bit generous with this. This glue doesn't give you a whole lot of leeway for drying time. So we want to be pretty efficient with this as we put the glue down. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now we're just going to flip it over and center it on the fabric. I did not really check at all about the design, but I'm assuming it will. And then now we just want to press everything down, give it a good press, and continue to press it down because it can kind of let go of that fabric and then it won't it won't be it'll dry without the fabric ever touching it it's not tacky glue you know where you you press a little bit to the to the fabric or you know the material and it just kind of sticks anyway so let me just take a look see yeah we're pretty good in frame i don't usually use that glue i feel like i can taste it, it smells kind of strong Usually I just use little bits at a time and it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. Okay. So now, now we can, and that glue, it does not take that long. This is kind of tearing my chipboard a little bit. It's not super great, but we can live with it. We'll just live with it. Okay. So, feeling pretty good about that. Nice and bendy a bowl. This is not quite to the edge there, so we're just gonna add a little bit of glue down the side. And maybe it's just because it dried before it got all the way. So now we're gonna that down. Let's see if we've got the same issue here. Well, not too bad, but a little bit. I don't even know if this matters that much. Probably does not. But we'll just we'll just do it. Okay. Okay. 
Now, big chunk out of those corners. Cut a curve around there. Okay, I, all right, I'm going to put some glue right in that corner and don't, don't do this, don't do it like this. <laughs> I'm going to hold that there and I want that to stick, but it may not. So this is how you should do it. <laughs> Tilly. Fold that corner down on the glue. Hold it. Usually sticks pretty fast. Okay, there we go. And then do the same here. Kind of hold that for a sec. I just like this corner look a lot better than some other corners that there are out there. And you'll see why I'm doing this, because that will be a great example of how not to do it. And these are staying nicely. So what happens if you if you cut this like this straight in the corner, then you get this little lift up here. I don't know if you can see that. So when we do this one, you're gonna see it does that, which is so much better, much much better. So in the end, I mean, you can kind of cover these up. And you can't see it that much, but, and I'm just going to hold this one down and let's see how this one goes. There we go. So that will be a lot better at any rate. Okay. So now we're going to do the top. All right. That does take a little bit of a minute. You probably don't need this. This is more than an inch of overlap, but that's fine for me. Okay. Now you just do want to pull that pretty snug all the way down.
and maybe, well, we'll just do it like this. here I don't need. All right, so the top and the bottom are done, and now let's move on to the side. Here. All right. There we go. Okay. So now we've got our cover. So, and we'll pull out our insert again. And here. And we are simply going to glue. Now I did make my spine a little bigger and I said, hmm, you probably shouldn't do that, but I did. And I re the reason I did it is because I know that this is going to get, this is going to end up getting really bulky. And because you know, when I start adding papers to my journal, which I, which I'm going to do. And, uh, if you were just to add, like, actually just keep this as a writing journal, it would, it would be fine. Um, uh, and you could just write right in it, but then you wouldn't need that, but that's not what we're doing. So at this point, I'm going to glue the spine. Keeps like curving down the end. Okay. I feel like it's a good idea to be a little bit generous here. It will take a little bit longer to dry, but this is the spot where we really want it to be secure. So we are going to center this really, really well. And get that right centered in the spine and the top and the bottom. And now we're just going to hold that down for a minute. Putting some top pressure, side pressure, until that glue is doing what we need it to do. Feels pretty secure so far. We'll give it a little extra. Make sure. Okay. All right. So yeah, we have done it. We have created a book, and you can also uh, kind of join this and this here with a piece of paper but you really don't want to interfere with this piece of fabric here. So, and I guess I could just glue this to here and that to the back. And if I did, that would work pretty good. But that would also limit 
the extra space that I would get because if I don't do that, then I'm sort of getting this extra room for my spine. So uh, let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if I were to glue that here, this is what my spine would end up being about this width. But what I'm doing is giving it this width. So I don't know if you can see that. So I'm giving it a little extra wiggle room to, to add more papers to the inside. So I think, I think that does it. I'm pretty happy with this. This, this book looks pretty good. I guess we would call this the front. You can see a little bit of glue through there. I probably went a little crazy with the glue and we'll see if that, if that dries and becomes invisible. If not, I can always add some trim right over that part. So you can see the other places the glue didn't come through. So that's good news. So what I have decided for this one is I'm going to cover this area here and I'm going to cover uh, this probably, but I'm, I'm not going to join those two together because I want that extra, extra wiggle room for being able to expand this book and, and make it a little chunky and a little, a little chunky monkey. Uh, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. This is our, our little book. It turned out really well. We've got some lovely Ralph Lauren fabric over here. We've got pages that are all ready to be filled up with, with either journaling or maybe your uh, junk journal decoration or maybe filling it with your ancestor uh, ancestor's life. Like, uh, like I've been doing with these heritage journals. So uh, at any rate, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please, uh, you know, pop it in the comments and I'd be glad to help with, with any questions that you have. Um, I hope you found this helpful. And if you did enjoy the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you have any uh, other basic uh, genealogy questions, you can always check out on my website, root-pursuit.com. All right. Thanks much. Talk to you later. Hello, Kelly here from Root Pursuit. Just adding on to the last video when I was doing the cover and I was saying how with this spine, I was leaving, like I could do it so that it was this width, but I know that I'm going to add things and I want this book to be a little chunkier so I want my spine to be more like like this like that so uh we've got this little bit of extra inside and we don't really like how that looks but we don't want to interfere that was my dog but we don't want to interfere with the uh extra room that we're giving the spine. So what we're doing is we're taking this extra piece of fabric. It's actually ribbon that I cut off the wire edges. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a, a stream of glue down each side. Or a line of glue down each side. and center that but no glue in in the middle and that's so that we can keep that extra leeway so we're attaching it to that side and then we are attaching it to the other side and as we're doing that it's moving around a little bit but you just kind of want to it gives you a little bit of time to manipulate it so you want it to keep that wiggle room but still have the movability and still close efficiently so now now we can cover this and we can cover this piece and we'll we'll still have that fabric in between so it looks decently and then I'll just do the same thing to the back 
side. So this, like I said, the point of this is if you are adding papers and you need your spine to be a little bit chunkier. So this is the result of me creating a spine that was wider than my book guts. And the reason I did that is because I know that I'm gonna need that extra space for when I start adding uh, and make it into essentially a junk journal. So um, it seems to work best if we're gluing it to the back cover first. And then once we get that pretty well secure, we can kind of gently line up and you can also close it to make sure it's going to give you a good bend. And this part, if it has a little extra glue there, we're not too worried about it. I did, uh, whoop, I got some spots here I want to make sure are sticking good. And I did use the pinking shears because uh, the actually the original purpose of the pinking shears is to, you know, because they're at a diagonal and the threads of the fabric are uh, perpendicular, you're basically preventing fray in the fabric because the angles of the pink uh, prevent your fabric from fraying on the line that the thread comes off. So that, that's the purpose of the pinking shears. So if you ever are doing junk journaling and need to prevent the fray and but you don't want to sew an edge you can use those pinking shears and it will prevent fraying it doesn't stop it 100 percent, but it does reduce it so there you have it all right we've we're on our way to having this nice chunky journal and pretty happy with the results of it so far. So I hope that little tip helps you and I will talk to you later.